Shifters are one of the only moving parts of your bike that just seems to last forever. But have you ever wondered how they work and just what's inside? Well, in this video, let's get one apart and see what's going on in there. It was back in 1990 when Shimano released its STI shifters. STI standing for Shimano Total Integration. And what a year it was, the invention of the STI lever and also the year I was born. And ever since then, we've had reliable and compact shifting units that we're familiar with today. But how do they work and what do the mechanisms inside look like? It's been 15 years since I've taken one of these apart and that didn't end so well. So fingers crossed for today. And fortunately enough, I've got a slightly older lever to use today to show you what's inside. Before we get going, I should probably say I don't recommend doing this unless you're particularly skilled with this sort of stuff. So today we've got an old shifter to use, but you probably shouldn't take your best shifters apart, save those for when you need to use them. Most shifters will come apart with the kind of tools that you're gonna have lying around at home. We've got some small screwdrivers, flathead and Phillips, some small Allen keys, and a selection of small spanners to make sure you can get everything apart. Each shifter will vary slightly, but that's what we're gonna to need to get that done today. So let's make a start getting this apart and the first things we're going to need to do are to remove this rubber hood cover off here to allow us to gain access to some of the side pieces in there and then we're going to need to undo this small little grub screw here to drive this pin out and that will enable us to separate this main lever body away from the plastic housing here to gain further access and take the parts further off that we need. So far we've got our main plastic lever body which also has the clamp for attaching this to your handlebars. We've got the pin which we drove out, which is the pivot point for the brake lever. So this sits inside here and allows, allows your brake lever to pivot. And we've also got the small spring, small but quite a strong spring, which is what makes the brake lever return back to the body itself. And this is what we've got separated, which contains all of the key working components. You can see here, we've got this small cable, a small ribbon cable, which runs inside to the shifter. Um, and this was actually called Shimano's flight deck system, which is quite an older design now, but would have wired directly into a Shimano compatible head unit. So that would have been able to give you a visual display of what kind of gear, gear you were in, but not a particularly reliable system. So let's get the rest of this apart and see what we've got left. As you can see here, we've got quite a lot of parts already removed and you can start to see some of the cool internals of the workings here. Um, so the next step for what we're gonna do is actually to take this main spring off, which is the part that makes the lever return. It's quite a strong spring, this one. Um, and also that'll enable us to remove this big lever part from the body of, well, what's left of the main body. And then we can see even more of the inside workings and see what we've got to work with. This is probably about as far as we're going to dismantle this shifter today because, well, as you can see here, we're down to the real like nitty gritty of it with the uh, multiple mechanisms and ratcheting designs. Um, I did actually take this one apart further at the weekend and found myself with quite a lot of parts and springs flying everywhere. So probably best we didn't take it any further apart today. But it's great here because we can get real close in and see all of the different teeth ratcheting mechanisms and just really the how inner workings so we can take some good close-up looks at this and be able to explain just how this shifter works. We've also got this part which I spoke about earlier which is the older Shimano flight deck system and this works with these two little locating pins here and this white one here which I don't know if you can still see that and as the shifter moves it sits into a different position and this white disc can turn within the black housing and that will give a different signal through this wire to indicate what gear you're in. So it's kind of an early version of what you're able to do with the DI2 system, but this is a bit more of a cabled foolproof version, so quite impressive stuff. So having got this all the way apart as we have here, it's probably a great time to give it a bit of a clean, maybe with some brake cleaner, um, and apply some fresh grease because I doubt at any point in its life has this been apart far enough to be cleaned and have any fresh grease installed? So I suppose now's a great time to do it, seeing as we've gone this far. Now we've got the internal mechanisms nice and clean and free of any old grease and grime, it's a good time to dive right inside here and get a close-up look and see some of the mechanisms working themselves when we operate the lever. So let's have a look inside. So with this nice and clean, we can see this, this channel here is actually where the cable sits and that runs all the way through 
and then would come out of the side of the shifter into your outer cable. That clips into place just all the way around here is where the end of your cable will sit and it spins all the way around. Then as you operate, this little lever here, which is normally sat on the bike, you can see that rotates that part around. I don't know if you can see that as it's turning around. And that's what causes the gears to operate and change gear. And the easiest way to describe this is that it's an opposing ratchet system. So we've got a set of ratchets in here which engage one way and a set that engage the other way. And when we shift gear into a harder gear, for example, one set of the ratchets release to enable the mechanism to move one way, whilst the other push it through. And when we change gear the opposite way, the ratchets just reverse their operations. So the one that was releasing to allow the movement is now engaging to push the shift barrel the opposite way. And by doing that, it allows us to add and remove cable tension by rotating this part all the way around, reliant upon those ratcheting systems to hold it in place or move it as we shift. So we've got our lever fully stripped apart, we've cleaned it, we've explained how it works, so I suppose all that's left is to put some fresh grease into it and make a start on reinstalling some of these parts we've got on the workbench and fingers crossed we don't have any left over. To reinstall all the parts we've got left over, it's quite simply a process that we reverse what we did to take it apart. And it's not that exciting, so let's speed it up a little bit and save some time. So we've got our shifter almost completely back together. All that remains is our one little part, which is this cover here, which goes onto the flight deck system. And so I suppose we better put it back in place and finish the job off. So we can put that in there. And all that stands between us and a working shifter again are two little screws. So we'll just guide these in. There's your shifter back together. Although we haven't got the, we'll put this on in a minute, but wrestle that on a little bit so um, all we've got is a shifter back together and I suppose we should check to see if it actually works we've got um, engaging gears clicking all the way across and like that we've got these ones releasing all the way through and we've got a brake which returns by itself and a shift lever that returns by itself as well as those ones and with nice fresh grease in there that should last forever so there you have it, a mechanical shifter has got lots of intricate parts inside and it's pretty impressive when you consider just how reliable they are. Um, and up next, we'll take a quick little look inside a DI2 shifter to see what's going on in there as well. So this is a DI2 lever we've got here and it's a bit of an old bashed up one, but it's ideal to show us how it works. And the DI2 levers are way simpler than the mechanical ones. Obviously, we've got a couple of electronic buttons. We've got two buttons here, which are our normal shift buttons. We've got this button here and this button here to operate two buttons within this unit here. And then they run on a cable up to this point, which is our uh, junction box. We've got a couple of spare ports, which can be used for um, sprint buttons or additional shifting buttons that you might want to add to the system. And this port here is where you would take the cable to join into the rest of the system. We've also got underneath this little cover here, take that off. Um, is the cabling that runs from this junction box up to our little hidden button here, which many people are unaware of. And a very similar design to our mechanical shifter earlier is we've got the same pivot point here and a spring design, which is going to enable the shifter to return with the brake. But because this is a DI2 lever, it doesn't turn to the side at any point because it just, it just doesn't need to. So it's only a one directional pivot here rather than the mechanical one that can shift across. We've also got little part of the back here which can adjust the reach of the lever so that'll move the lever in slightly like that for people that have got slightly smaller hands maybe so that's a great bit of adjustability we've got here but I suppose the simplicity of this lever highlights the benefit of a DI2 system is there's less to go wrong and this is actually significantly lighter than a mechanical counterpart so it really is the way forwards it's much smaller body and is why DI2 is the great technology that it is. So there you have it, Shimano's mechanical levers stripped down and explained nice and clearly to see how impressive they are, as well as a quick explainer on the simplicity of Shimano's DI2 levers. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, give it a big thumbs up, and why not let us know in the comments section down below if you wanna see any other parts stripped all the way down and explained how they work too. Thanks for watching, see you later.